Options Education deals with international education and I've been in this business for the last three years. And uh, welcome to Meet the HR Show. This is the Meet the HR show with me, Laura Nell. Welcome very much. And as you've heard today, we have a student counselor. Thank you for having us today. You're welcome. This is a beautiful office. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so when someone hears about a student counselor, they're imagining kuna ili office, maybe in an institution, and it's more of guidance and counseling. Can you tell us what exactly it is? Okay. Um Thank you. Uh, when you hear of a student counselor, it basically means a counselor, mm -hmm. somebody who can be able to give you advice, but now in this perspective as a student, All right. we are able to guide students who wish maybe to further their studies, but now we specifically major on international education, All right. whereby we are able to give guidance on course selection, we are able to assist them in uh, school applications and also visa applications for international studies. Mm -hmm. At some point you might find students come in, uh, they don't have an idea of what they want to pursue, they've just done KCC and they're there, they don't know what they want to study. Yes. We are now able to come in as counselors, uh, assist them in course selection mm -hmm. and also now make them uh, feel comfortable and decide on what they really need to pursue. All right. Yeah. It's very rare or we've had very few people having this as a career. How did you land HAPA? Okay. Yes. Uh, I landed in options. Uh, okay, I just made an application. There was a, a posting that they were looking for student counselors. Then I said, let me just give it a try even if I don't know what it all entails. Ah. So I just came in as a fresh, uh, like a student also. Uh -huh. You learn as you also counsel others. And previously, what were you doing? Okay, initially I used to work in a level four hospital okay. as a human resource manager and also as a supervisor to that hospital. That is what you studied? No, I studied a bachelor <laughs> <laughs> okay. and hospitality management. Yes. Yeah. Then you found yourself here. Day one, now it's learning the job. How yeah. was it for you? Uh, day one. Mm. Actually, I must say, uh, you, you see those kind of jobs like you feel like, well, I think I'm in the wrong career. You need to go back home and go yeah. back to my previous employment. Yeah. You're there, you hear people, they, how they pitch their words, how they are able to counsel students. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, oh my God, am I in the right place? <laughs> but along the way, you just gain courage and you're able to learn. Now the training that is normally available is you listen to what other counselors say mm -hmm. and you're able now to learn along the way. And ah. eventually you just become a person. So when counselor. you decided to become a student counselor, mm -hmm. were you thinking about it, Ama, where the opportunity presents itself? There is where we are going. Where the opportunity presents itself is where we go. <laughs> so driven by passion. Okay. Uh, okay, from the word go, I've always aspired to become a journalist. Ah. And now when you find somewhere uh, where you're able to like even now communicate, like have a conversation with other people, like mm -hmm. just to boost your communication skills and everything. Yeah. That's the thing that I always go for. But now with my course, mm -hmm. it taught me more on management and customer care. Yes. Of which now when you add customer care, journalism and everything, I think student counseling will do for me. It's the perfect choice. <laughs> yeah. So did you go back to study or you just continued from here? I continued from here skills, any training? Okay, uh, the trainings we normally undergo, they're normally virtual from our uh, representatives and our the schools that we represent. Yes. They normally train us virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, they take you through the training sessions, they train you on how to apply for this course, any, any new updates that have come, mm -hmm. you are able to be told along the way. So mm -hmm. it's like an ongoing career that you train yourself as you also coach others and also assist other students. Oh, yep. so in short, mm -hmm. I can find such a course when I walk into any university. Yes. Different schools have different courses mm -hmm. and they have different ways of how they name their courses. You might find there is a school that uh, has a master's of international business. Mm -hmm. Equally, another school has a master's of business global, which is one and the same thing. So now, regardless example, of your course, uh -huh. 
for you, mm -hmm. uh, you as a student counselor, okay. if I go to our universities, mm -hmm. can I get such a course like a student counseling course? Or not really. You cannot. Now you see with student counseling, mm. it's not a matter of now you having that specific career for student counseling. Mm -hmm. Anybody with any degree, as long as you have a degree, you are able to counsel students who want to go and pursue higher learning. Mm -hmm. The first requirement is always to have a degree. Right. That one is the main requirement of this job. Yes. And then along the way, you get trained as you continue. Yes. Yeah. Certain skills that I require so that I can climb up the ladder like you. Okay. Yes. Of course, communication skills, being able to understand uh, clients, because you meet at every given day, you meet clients from different different backgrounds and perspectives, yes. and then also being able to multitask. You see, we normally work on emails, you have walk-in clients, you have your phone ringing 24-7. Yes. So when you're able to be a timekeeper and you're able to multitask, then you're able to fit into the job. Okay. Yeah. I am a student, I have worked in, just like you said, most of the time students come in and they don't know exactly what they want to do. Okay. For example, uh, do you engage with someone from primary, high school, or is it just someone who wants to go and uh, pursue their university levels? Okay. Yeah. Of course, the first, uh, the lowest we take is a KCSE uh, for four liver, because mm -hmm. that's where they start uh, giving their courses from year mm -hmm. twelve equivalent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say in this case, I've worked in here and I have no idea where do we start from. Okay. Mm -hmm. My name is Priska Yuma. Welcome to Options Education. Thank you. Uh -huh. What's your name? My name is Laura, and I'm here looking for an opportunity where I can go to. You work with Australia and I'd like to go and further my studies. Okay, yes, we work with Australia. And uh, before I could be able to guide you, at least I need to understand your progression of study from the time you completed your KCC up to date. I completed in 2016. Okay. And after completing in 2016, I pursued a degree in communication, electronic media. Then after that, I have worked in several institutions and here I am. You pursued your bachelor's in? Daystar. Uh, which year did you complete? I completed in 2020. 2020? Yes. And then from there you've been working? Yes, I have. Okay. Now my first question will be, what would you like to do as a master's program? Currently, I am in that opaque nature of things. Okay. So I'm hoping you could maybe guide me. Okay, you see, before I could give you my op options that I have for you, yes. we normally give the student the opportunity at least to say, maybe I would like to continue with the journalism thing, maybe I would like to now further and go to international relations, because you see, communication, mm -hmm. you can either do international relations as a master's program, you're equally able to do a, a public relations as a course, and equally you can still do communication mm -hmm. as a master's program. Yeah. And when you don't have an idea of what you want to do, then we give you a Master of Arts. A Master of Arts now has everything incorporated Ooh. in it. It has public relations, IR, Nabadwikona, communication. So you do it as a major, yes. you do it as a whole, and then you major along the way. So it means by the time you're giving me this information, you've already done your research, or does it come as a package in the training? It doesn't come as a package in the training. Along the way, you're able to know this course can yeah. be able to go with this package mm -hmm. yeah like i don't know how to say it but one day you come you find somebody asks you a very tricky question mm -hmm. you now go back and mm -hmm. research on it by the time they come back you are now able to say communication channels with one two three yes. yeah so you can at least give them the options yeah and now for a kcc liver mm -hmm. where do you start from with them okay for kcc we normally look at their grades mm -hmm. uh b plus qualifies you to a direct bachelor's program. Right. Anything below a B plus, yes, you qualify for any course, but now you're able to start with a packaged foundation program, a diploma or a foundation. If it's a B, a C plus, you're able to start with a diploma, but mm -hmm. below that you start with a foundation, proceed to the diploma, and then proceed to the bachelor's. All right. Yeah. So it's step, step, step. Yeah. And uh, for example, we were having this in, uh, conversation of, and you're telling me most of the time, the degree, if, I w if someone wants to go and work outside, mm -hmm. they'll have to start from a certain level. How does that go? Okay, so uh, we being an uh, education international uh, counseling uh, setup, mm -hmm. 
we mainly measure on student visas. All right. But we normally tell students that there is uh, good things that come with that student visa. Mm -hmm. One, you're given a visa that allows you to work as you study. Yes. But now when you look at work, you don't expect that you are a journalist here mm -hmm. and you'll go there upate bado unafanya journalism yeah. you know you'll start with these good paying jobs for international students that mm -hmm. will see you now climb the ladder mm -hmm. and achieve now your career as a journalist on the other end mm -hmm. and students are paid for those works they work uh, on an hourly basis oh, yeah okay. minimum wage rate is 25 dollars per hour which is very good money yes approximately 2000 kenya shillings ah. yeah so when i come to you mm -hmm. are there certain courses that you'll push more than the others or will it go with the passion of the person who's coming to meet you? Okay. When it comes to courses, mm -hmm. it depends. Especially for these international schools, you're not able to change a career and say like, I did communication, I now want to do nursing. No, mm -hmm. we go with that communication trail. If you are a Form 4 liver, you're free to pursue any course that you qualify for. Ooh. Yeah. Only these people who've already done either a diploma or a bachelor's mm -hmm. are supposed to proceed with that uh, uh, course level mm -hmm. so that they qualify for the student visa. So you'll give them the location and give them options of the schools? Yes. We normally assess. Once you've come to a conclusion of your career and you're able to select a course, we now proceed and give you schools available that offer the course you intend to pursue. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what makes you different from a career coach? Because someone might confuse you for a career coach. Okay. <laughs> yes. Kinda, it's like we are career coaches as well, mm -hmm. but now you see for us, we don't major on local uh, courses, mm -hmm. we major on international courses, because yes. we are selling international education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, for someone who is pursuing such a career, can they maybe be involved in being hired in our local schools and help other people get other opportunities outside? Or if I decide to take such a path, I'm just locked in being an, in an agency. Not really an agency, because mostly you'll find people who uh, leave this job, they end up opening their own sub-agencies ah. and doing the same thing. It equally works in both ends, either internationally or locally, mm -hmm. you're still able to guide students. Yeah. Even if now you don't have that qualification from the school, at least mm -hmm. you have a work experience yeah. that has seen you see uh, many students mm -hmm. succeed in their career uh, aspirations. All right. Yeah. When I come to you, can I have looked for an institution that I want to go? Or when I come to you, I should be blank? You can come with the institution, okay. but now that one also depends if we have a contract with that school. Oh, yes, so you how need does to that have, go? Yeah? Yeah, how does that go? Because you see, go? maybe you can come and tell me, uh, I've seen the University of Melbourne mm -hmm. offers a course that I intend to pursue. I'll tell you that we don't work with the University of Melbourne, but I equally have the University of Adelaide, that is all, it's in the same level as the University of, uh, of uh, Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm able now to tell you that this and this and this, is in the same rank as this school and it offers the same course. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm able to, of course, tell you some sweet things about <laughs> that school and location. <laughs> nice. Have you been in a situation whereby a parent comes in, they don't think going abroad is a good idea, but the child is so insistive, they want to go abroad. How do you handle such a situation? Of course, that one is a challenging situation. Yes. You try now and sell the benefits of going for international uh, international careers of mm -hmm. course they are globally recognized yeah. they don't have to practice like specifically in australia mm -hmm. you tell them the benefits you tell them now the good things about the work permit that comes in you tell them that they'll also have the opportunity to go visit their kids there yeah. like something just to entice them mm -hmm. to uh, to rethink their decision and make their students go is this something that kenyans have embraced or budget nasema most Kenyans have embraced because if you look at Kenya, uh, the rate of employment opportunities is very minimal, mm -hmm. unlike these other developed countries. Uko job ziko, si kitu wenye utasema hakunanga job, hakuna job no. Uko unajua wanawako on an hourly basis. If I'm here for three hours, I'll shift, you'll come and take my position. Yes. But huku Kenya, yes, unamaliza degree, you find somebody has been out of school since 2017, haja a job. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if they hear that people are able to go there and make it, mm -hmm. Apart from the financial aspect, most of the people are for the idea. All right. Yeah. And so far, how many students have you consulted with? Me, personally? Yes. I have over 50 students in Australia already. Uh -huh. I have one student in UK. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. And now you see the good thing with this business is once you take one student, mm -hmm. they send five to you. Uh -huh. So it's a growing business. Like it's something that you're able to grow as mm -hmm. a person. Wow. Yeah. Nowadays, things have gone very, very digital. And uh, you'll find that since I have the internet, I can just apply for myself and get into an institution. And then there's the other part that I'll need to come to you. Will, be, will there be a difference between me who will be applying online and me who has come to seek help from you? Okay, there's a very big difference. Okay. Especially with Australia, you're not able to apply on your own to the universities. You cannot? No. How come? They require you to go through a registered agent mm -hmm. for them to be able to verify the authenticity of your documentation okay. prior to submission to the school. So even if you apply, you'll reach to the last step and then they'll tell you, now go and find an agent. We work with agent ABC. Go submit your application through either of these agents. Yes. Yeah. And now, Hey, so it can't happen. No, you just for sale it can't. You need to use a registered agent. And for UK? UK you can. Oh. But now you see, you find most students who are playing on their own, mm -hmm. they end up making mistakes along the way, either the submission of the financial documents or anything, mm -hmm. which leads to a visa refusal. Yes. But now when you go to a, a student counsellor who's well versed with what is happening, what is required along the way, mm -hmm. they are able to tell you this and this and this is what you're supposed to submit during your visa, you're supposed to say this or not say this. So it's like you take someone through a coaching. Yeah. Because okay. you see there are interviews that students are done. Mm -hmm. UK, you do a written interview and Australia also you do a written interview. You see there are other people who would write an interview and say, I need to go to Australia because I need to work <laughs> and pay for my fees. Of, of, of which if you say that mm -hmm. at the visa stage, it will be an a successful outcome. Okay. So we are able to guide them on what to say and what not to say. Of course, they know you are going to hustle, yeah. but you're not supposed to put it there and say, hey, nataka job niende ku to make something out of Now what should someone say? Someone should say that I intend to go pursue my study, come back to my home country and <laughs> seek help. <laughs> so that should be the entry yes. point. Yeah. And now from the training, from the moment that I am very interested mm -hmm. and I want to fly out, how long? What could be the duration? Okay, for the entire process, mm. we normally give an a tentative of uh, around three to four months. Three to four months? Yes. School application normally takes three to four weeks mm -hmm. for the school to assess and give you feedback. Yeah. Equally, the visa application process takes 21 working days to two months for them to be able to give you an outcome of your application. All right. Because you see specifically Australia, mm -hmm. the embassy is based in South Africa. Oh. Yes. So it's an online visa application and it's a paper visa as well. There's no way they'll stamp here Australian visa, no. And now, mm -hmm. with you working with very many people, you meet the challenging students and mm -hmm. those ones who they're just doing it because of their parents. Mm -hmm. How do you get them back to line? Because you have to tell them the amount of money that is being invested here mm -hmm. is not little. Yeah. yeah. Of course, there are those students who come and tell you that I'm just doing this because mom wants me to do this. Mm -hmm. And now you see this is a country that is miles away. Yeah. You normally now try and, and advise the student and tell them that if you feel that you don't feel like you want to go to do this, mm. then maybe you can give your sibling an opportunity. Because you see, Australia is very strict for students. Mm -hmm. You go there, your main uh, visa requirement is to meet the cost requirements. You fail, they deport you back to your home country. Immediately? Yes. The next flight we will find you in Nairobi, Pale, Jomo, Kenyatta. <laughs> okay, go jewa. Yeah, so, lazima mtuwa kwenye yo mindset, anajua naenda kusoma, in as much kuna kuhasol, mm. anajua naenda kusoma. And then once now you see somebody a Mekubali and they are ready to take up the, uh, the opportunity, mm -hmm. now you proceed with the application. We okay. don't just do it because you are in business. Yeah. We also look at the student's career. Asiende akufe na depression and everything, aseme nilirushu huku, na si kitu walikuwa nataka. Yes. Yeah. So after you, they've already gotten their visa and they're on their way. Do you do a, li a little bit of follow-up or once they are gone, next patient, next client? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, we do follow up, mm -hmm. and equally we have two offices in Australia, specifically to uh, assist the students with support mm -hmm. and, and, and assist them in anything they need to be done on the other end. Right. Our main headquarters is based in Adelaide, Australia, mm -hmm. and we equally have another office in Western Australia, specifically for student mm -hmm. support, ongoing support, until they are able to complete their studies, now graduate. Oh. Yeah. And for a situation whereby someone has reached there and it's not what they wanted to do, mm. 
how do you go about it now you see once they're there mm-hmm. of course there are those students who will disturb you siko nataka iko nataka ku change yeah of course the first thing ni atenda kwa faculty yake in advice if they are able to do uh, a course change or maybe pursue something else yes if it's not possible unfortunately they'll have to take it because australia as i said is very strict mm-hmm. they are able to detect if you're not going to classes the government and once they see that unakuwa deported they follow how you go yes even if you change your course the immigration is able to know if you don't attend classes the schools will report you to the embassy you cannot play this, jokes na huko kuna ka kufanya joke kama huko Kenya ti mtu anakusainia hapo paper ulikuwa class na huko kwa hapana huko lazima usome yes na attend classes because mm-hmm. it's like umeko kaka CCTV and they are very keen on the well-being of the students okay. it's a safe country for students mm-hmm. yeah so nothing can happen to you without either the school or the embassy knowing most young people it reaches a point they are like Whatever I studied is not working for me. I am done with it. What would you tell them? They pursued a career and they feel it's not working out. Okay. Looking at that camera, what would you tell them? Okay. Ah, uh, okay, me being an example, I did a totally different course. I've been able to work in different fields. What I'll tell my uh, peers is you should never give up. Always try to hack it out. We always start somewhere and eventually we'll be able to meet our career goals. Yeah, they shouldn't give up at any given point. That has been Meet the HR Show with me, Lornell. Till next week, bye!